The Cosmo Biography of Sun Ra by Chris Roshka. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to see you a little bit today. I really miss you guys. Um, I want to read you a book today with my little helper, Otis. Come on, Otis, and say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi! All right, come on up and let's read them our favorite book. It's my favorite book. All right. It's called The Cosmo Biography of Sun Ra. Are you ready? Yeah. Sun Ra always said that he came from Saturn. Now you and I know that this is silly. No one comes from Saturn. And yet, if he did come from Saturn, it would explain so much. Let's say he did come from Saturn. He did come from Saturn. He did? Yeah. How do you know? Great job. Well, on May 22nd, 1914, Sun Ra landed on Earth. Looking around, he found himself in Birmingham, Alabama. His parents named him Herman and called him Sonny. Being from another planet, Sun Ra was naturally interested in everything earthy. Trees, clouds, and spotted dogs, apples, hot dogs, and corn on the cob, hats, socks, and wigs, drawing, dancing, and throwing a ball, and most of all, music. It was the thing about Earth that was the most like the stars. It is not so surprising that Sun Ra was a musical genius. He was a fine piano player by the time he was 11. He could notate music that he heard on the radio or in dance halls. Sun Ra noticed the books in the library of the Black Masonic Temple, and he spent many hours reading about the great philosophies of the earth, including Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry, which another musical genius, Mozart, had also been curious about. One thing puzzled Sun Ra. The earthlings insisted on sorting themselves into two varieties, the white variety and the black variety. Sun Ra was sorted into the black variety. Also, the name his parents had given him, Herman Blount, hardly seemed the name of someone from Saturn. As soon as he could, Sun Ra changed his name to Le Seigneur Ra, and then simply to Sun Ra. As a teen earthling, Sun Ra spent long afternoons at the Forbes Piano Company, where even though the store was owned by earthlings of the white variety, he was welcome to play, compose, or just practice the piano. Before he left high school, Sun Ra was already a professional musician, leading his own ensemble and accompanying singers. Then Sun Ra saw the strangest thing. All over the globe, the earthlings began fighting and killing each other. It was the Second World War. Sun Ra refused to join in. Questioning him, the Birmingham Draft Board understood that his conscience would not allow him to fight. Little did they know that he was from Saturn. So they designated him a conscientious objector. Instead of going to war, Sun Ra was sent to work in a forest in Pennsylvania. After the war, wishing to learn more about earthly music, Sun Ra traveled to Chicago to absorb its blues, doo-wop, and jazz. Sun Ra mastered all of these, both as a performer and a composer. Sun Ra drew other musicians to him. They played in small groups, medium-sized groups, and big groups, with singers or without singers, all kinds of ways. They were like sailors on a boat bound for the new world, a new world of sound. And like all good sailors, they played and danced and sang while their captain Sun Ra steered the ship. They called themselves the orchestra. Being from outer space, Sun Ra was afraid neither of electrons nor electricity, and so was one of the first musicians on Earth to use an electric keyboard. He played the mini Moog, the clavinet, and the Roxy chord. Between working at night and rehearsals in the morning, Sun Ra browsed in Chicago's bookstores or spent the long afternoons simply walking the city's streets and avenues. He was an intergalactic boulevardier. This left little time for sleeping. In his life on Earth, Sun Ra rarely slept for several hours in a bed. He took short naps throughout the day, sometimes even dozing during his own rehearsals. When he woke again, he immediately continued with what he had just been doing. In the early 1960s, Sun Ra sailed with the orchestra to New York City. Though some New Yorkers complained that Sun Ra was too far out, what did they expect from a Saturnian? The wise ones like Dizzy Gillespie and Thelonious Monk said, keep it up, Sonny, and yeah, it swings. 
Would it surprise you that the orchestra made its own clothes? Robes of purple cotton, silk scarves, bone necklaces, and crowns of shining metal foil. From this time on, joining the orchestra meant being ready to live with the orchestra, rehearse with the orchestra, and perform with the orchestra, sometimes playing for many, many hours on end. The music might be crisp and tight one moment, then wild and free the next, changing with a nod of Sun Ra's head or a wave of his fingers. One disadvantage of coming from Saturn, though, was that Sun Ra could never really understand or care too much about money. The New York landlords, on the other hand, did and kicked the orchestra out, so they sailed again, this time to Philadelphia, renting a house there. With Philadelphia as their home port, the orchestra traveled all around the earth, playing, singing, and dancing for people who spoke every language. Of all the places they visited, Sun Ra's favorite was where the Great Pyramids stand in the sands of Egypt. At last, after 79 years, it was time for Sun Ra to say goodbye to the earth and all his friends there. On May 30th, 1993, he returned to Saturn. Before he left, Sun Ra said, You may think that it is gravity that holds us all together, but it is not. It is music. What do you do? You got the 
When you know, you know you wrong. You got the face of the music. Ain't no place you can run. You can't run. You can't hide. What do you do when you know that you know? That you know that you're wrong. The year 2000. What do you do when you know that you're knocking at your door? That you know that you're wrong. Knocking at your door. You got to face the music. You can't run. You got to listen to the compo song. You got to face the music. You can't run. You got to listen to the compo song. The year 2000. What do you do when you know that you know? On the way. That you know that you're wrong. That you know that you're wrong. What do you do when you know that you know? That you know you're wrong. You got to face the music. You got to listen to the cosmo song. You got to face the music. You got to listen to the cosmo song. What do you do? You know that you know. You know. You know you're wrong. What do you do? When you know. When you know. You know you're wrong. You got to face the music. You got to listen to the cosmo song. You can't run. You can't hide. You got to face the music. You got to face the music. What do you do when you know that you know that you know that you know that you're wrong? What do you do? You know you know you're wrong. You got to face the music. You got to listen. Listen to the cosmos song. Listen to the melodies, the harmonies, and the rhythms of the cosmos song. You got to face the music. The last planet I remember is planet Saturn. I'm from there. And now we're going to do a Sun Ra song called Space is the Place. Thank you. 